हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू आर वेल टुडे इन दिस थर्ड एपिसोड ऑफ कंसेप्ट टॉक ऑफ एथिक्स विल बी डीलिंग विद ए न्यू टॉपिक इन द फर्स्ट टॉपिक वी हैड टेकन टू टर्म्स वन वॉज एथिक्स एंड द सेकेंड वॉज मोरलिटी इन द सेकेंड टॉपिक वी टुक सिंपैथी एंड इम्पैथी द कंपेरिजन एंड द मीनिंग देयर ऑफ इन दिस थर्ड एपिसोड वील बी टेकिंग थ्री टर्म्स विच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई हैव फाउंड इन मोस्ट ऑफ द सजेशंस गिवन बाई द व्यूअर्स these terms are present there so the three terms which we will be dealing today one of them is called integrity i hope you know this is a part of your syllabus the second term which is very close to this and that is called honesty and the third term which is again mentioned in the syllabus of ies a6 that is called probity so what is integrity what is honesty what is probity and what are their relationships interrelationships this is what we are going to discuss today in this video lecture first of all let me tell you what is the placing of these topics in your syllabus and how important are they as far as integrity is concerned this is mentioned in topic number 3 of your syllabus which is known as aptitude and foundational values for civil services in the segment of foundational values there are many values like integrity is there empathy is there compassion is there tolerance is there i think objectivity is also there non partisanship is also there so these are all values which are mentioned in topic number 3 they are the foundational values of civil services as far as honesty is concerned this is not mentioned in your syllabus but it is believed that integrity and honesty are very close to each other and so whenever you are supposed to answer something about on integrity you are inherently supposed to differentiate between these two terms in order to explain what integrity is you need to explain how is it different from honesty as far as the probity is concerned this is mentioned in topic 7 of your syllabus and this is in the very heading of the topic and the topic is probity in governments and then a lot of sub topics are given and in one sense i can say probity has not been mentioned as a foundational value for civil services but in governance as a specific value i'll explain this why i'm saying this so this is where the terms are placed as well as the importance is concerned you will be surprised to know that since 2013 when this new paper was introduced by upsc in 13 14 17 18 and 19 in this 5 years upsc has asked full length questions on this topic three times so integrity two times on probity even uppcs even rajasthan administrative services rs exam they also have asked various questions about integrity and probity so if i have to name very few topics of this paper which are highly important i will name integrity and probity to be at the top of the list so let us try to understand what are they and at which point they can be differentiated with each other So I'll start with an example, as I always do. And what we'll do is, we'll start with integrity and honesty, and then gradually we will take the third word that is called probity. So let us start with integrity and honesty, and I'll start with an example. Fine. Suppose there is a cricket match going on, and this is the crease there are three wickets here and there are three wickets here fine and this is the batting end we can say and this is the bowling end let us say and suppose you are the bowler of the match and you are running from this place and there is a batsman at this place so situation is very tricky you are a very honest man as people believe that you will never go against the rules of the game you will never go against the spirit of the game 
you are a person of sportsman spirit this is a belief about you so this is a crucial match and the winner of this match will participate in the finals and then they can have a trophy this is not an international match i am not willing to make the situation very difficult for you so let us take it this is a match of local teams and you were in one of the teams and you were the main bowler of the team and you are bowling the last over and now is coming the last ball of the match the batting team needs only two runs to win and needless to say if they score one run they will have a tie and bowling team is putting all its efforts to stop them from taking two runs because for them also it's very crucial to participate in finals and both the teams are dying to participate in finals so you have started to bowl and you have taken a very good run up and then you bowled and the batsman played a very good shot but by chance there was a toss in the ball and ball went at this place and there was a fielder at this place suppose the batsman is unsure whether he will be able to score something because he believes that he will be caught and out get out as a bowler you also believe that it's a wicket and you are going to win the match so what the batsman is doing is he is running slowly not very slowly he is running in with a belief that if this is not a catch at least in that situation they have to win so he is running and you are also moving towards this side but with a doubt whether this will be a wicket or not so by chance the catch is dropped here and this is not a wicket and they have taken one run and now they are running badly for the second run by this time you have reached this place and batsman who went from this place to this place now he is running back towards the side you are looking at the ball because there is a throw and you are willing to get the throw here there is wicket keeper and you are standing here and by chance the throw is coming towards your side and just to grab the throw you are running blindly towards this place and at the same time the batsman is coming from there and he is also looking at the ball not towards you neither you nor he knows that both of you have come very close to each other and may collide with each other and by mistake by no one's by no one's intention just by a mistake there is a collision and the batsman gets down he is injured badly but because his team depends on him he gets up and tries to run with one leg in the air because there is some sprain in his leg and because he is not able to run fast due to this you have got the throw you have grabbed the ball in your hand and you are in a situation where you can easily throw the ball at the wickets and you can get him out now this is very much clear to everybody that you have not done this intentionally you have not collided with him intentionally everyone knows that this was a mistake not a mistake of someone this was a mutual mistake no one uh, cared enough about this that they are going to collide with each other as far as the rules are concerned rules very clearly say that if a player from the fielding side intentionally collides with the batting side then the umpire has to take a decision but if it happens unintentionally the bowler side or the fielder side they are eligible they are able to get the batsman out with the throw with the run out and you can while you are within the rules of the game you can easily 
get that person out. This is the situation. Now what will you do? This is my question. You have two options. And in this situation, I believe at least 99 of the 100 persons will choose option 1. Option 1 will be to throw the ball on the wicket and get that batsman out. This is the first option. And if this is an international match and if this is the World Cup final match and India and Pakistan are playing in the match, India is at the bowling side and Pakistan needs two runs to win. And any player is playing there except Mahatma Gandhi. And if they have two, and if they have the situation in which they can get the batsman out of Pakistan, gets the batsman of Pakistan out rather, they will do that. One in a hundred players would say no. I will not get him out. I will not hit the ball on the wicket. And so he will create a situation in which the batsman doesn't get out. He remains not out and they win the match. I know you must be thinking he is a fool. He is a foolish person. If you have the situations in your control, if you can get the other person out, why should you not? Especially when you are playing within the rules. This is the difference where honesty and integrity become different from each other. This is the point where they can be differentiated, where they can become different. If you make him out, you are not doing anything against the rules and I would say you are honest. There is no doubt about your honesty because we know that you did not collide with the batsman intentionally. So you are an honest player. You did what you should do. You want your team to win. You want to win. And you won without doing anything wrong intentionally. But one out of the hundreds, one out of the thousand players would decide not to throw the ball on the wicket. He may get out of the team later on. He may have to answer to the committee, investigation committee, which will ask him different difficult questions. They will ask you, why did you do this? Why did you not take care of the interest of the team? And he will have to answer a lot of things. He may have to be uh, retired from the career. He may, he may be dismissed from the team rather. Even then, when asked, what would he say? He will say, See, when I play, I play with the sportsman spirit. And for me, the sportsmanship or the spirit of sports does not limit to the rules of the game. As far as the rules are concerned, I know I could run him out. But if I see the spirit behind this, I had bowled and the batsman did bat very well. He played a very good shot. We could not catch him out. In this situation, it was very easy for the batsman to take two runs. We all know. And he was taking the run, second run. By chance, he collided with me and he was thrown. He got down. He got injured. And due to that injury, he was not able to run very fast. And because of that injury, if we could get him out, we could have won the match, that is fine. But this is not the real philosophy of the game. This is not the real spirit of the game. Winning a match by this tactics or by, by taking benefit or advantage of the situation, of the opportunity, I believe it's better to lose the game, but we should win the spirits of the game. So when a person says that I follow the rules, he is honest. When a person says I follow the rules, but when there is a question of taking personal benefits on the basis of the rules, I would not take the benefit. I would see the spirit behind the rules 
and spirit behind the rules is greater to me in comparison to the rules of the game then i would say this is a person of integrity there are only few situation when integrity and honesty becomes different in normal day to day life they have the similar meaning they have the similar examples but in rare conditions you will find the situations when someone reaches at the level of integrity and integrity that is why said to be a higher higher value a greater value than honesty so now i know this example is not a very apt example you may be disturbed with this example i'll give you some more examples of administrative life professional life but let us first understand what is the meaning of honesty then we'll see what is integrity and then we'll see how they coexist in a situation how they dif get differentiated in a situation so first of all let us understand what honesty is and how can we define honesty so as far as honesty is concerned i would say honesty basically this is a value value you know what is a value value is an ideal a moral ideal which an individual or a society aspires to achieve so in any society there are some moral ideals which a society wants every human being to achieve in his or her behavior when value becomes a part of conduct when value becomes a normal part of personality it is developed to that level then we say now this is a virtue which a person has developed in his personality or her personality so honesty is a value value means a moral ideal everyone should be honest so this is a value value of what value of doing right or value of being upright so in other words i can say value of not being corrupt so an honest person will not be a corrupt person and corruption doesn't only mean money expecting anything other than which you are entitled for to do a job is called corruption like if i am supposed to work at an office from 10 to 6:30 and i get a salary for that if i am expecting anything else maybe some fame maybe some special treatment at some place maybe some extra money other than my salary this is all corruption not even that because i am a senior individual senior officer and none other than me in the office has right to ask anything from me so i don't come at 10 o'clock i reach at 11 o'clock i leave at 5 o'clock if that is a part of my job then it's fine if i'm supposed to have some field visits as well as i have to see the office it is possible that i reach at 10 o'clock at a field site i visit the site and then i come to office that's a different thing but if i am doing a job in which i am supposed to sit at the office only and my office time is from 10 am and i reach the office normally at 10:30 10:45 or 11 o'clock this is a kind of corruption because i am expecting something other than the rules which i have been told at the timing of my joining so not being corrupt is being honest so honesty is a value in which one behaves right one is upright in his behavior he doesn't do something which is which can be called corrupt and in this i am including everything uh, anything any monetary gains we can say and even the other gains so if you find a person of such nature who will not do anything wrong who will not cross the line of the rules and regulations and code of conduct and code of ethics you can say he or she is an honest person 
Now let us understand what then is integrity. If this is honesty, then what is integrity? Integrity is almost a similar thing with some difference, little difference. What is integrity? Integrity is also a value. Fine. Both of these values are termed as the foundational values in the syllabus of ethics in topic number 3. And foundational values are the basic values which a person should have in the life and which a civil servant also should have in the life when he is going to be a civil servant. Basically, he or she must have these values in his conduct. They are called foundational values for civil services. So what is integrity? This is also a value. But here there is a word integrity which has the roots in integration. So the value of integrity means integration. And generally it is believed that integrity has to be a rock solid value. It has to be 100% integration. There should be no deviation. So let us assume 100%. Some people say 100% is just an imagination. No one can be 100% upright. No one can be 100% moral or ethical. So 100% or close to 100% we can say this. 100% integration in two things. One is values and one is conduct. Conduct is the normal behavior of an individual where something ethical or moral is there. So when you have to choose between ethical and unethical, moral or immoral, normally the method of your behavior is known as conduct. I'll sometime explain what is conduct, what is character, what is nature of a human being. These all these words have differences. So conduct is the normal behavior pattern of an individual in ethical or moral situations. So we all have values, we all have conduct. And if we see ourselves, I'll say some of the people have only 20% integration, some may have 50% integration, some may have 80% integration and some may have 100% or close to 100% integration. It means if I believe in a value that truthfulness is the right value, transparency is the right value, let us assume or tolerance is a good value. If tolerance to the level of expectation I have achieved in my personality, it has become a virtue in my personality. And in all possible situations where one should have tolerance, I am able to keep tolerance in all those situations. We would say that this person has achieved 100% correlation between the value of toleration and his or her conduct. And as soon as someone achieves 100% or close to 100% integration in the value and in his conduct, we would say this is the level of integration or this is the value of integrity or this is the virtue of integrity that he or she has developed in his or her personality. So, this is to differentiate in a sense its integrity with honesty. Now, one more point. I told you one has to be rock solid if he wants to be a person of integrity. Now, this integration, when does it lack? It lacks especially when no one is watching us. Most of us are every time honest. But the test of honesty has to be taken when no one is watching us. And when we have a surety that no one would ever be able to know what I did in this situation when nobody was watching me. And you will be seeing that most of the people when they behave rudely or when they behave in corruption, they do when either they are behaving as a part of the crowd or mob or when they are behaving with the belief 
that no one will be able to know what they have done they have belief no one is watching me and in integrity it is believed when no one is watching me at that time i am watching myself and the people with this belief system so what if no one is watching me i am watching myself if someone is honest to the level of this level if someone is honest to the level of watching himself or herself when no one else is watching him or her it means he or she is a person of integrity and that is why we believe integrity is a higher value than honesty now it seems that both are same what is the difference so let us come to the next point and this that is what is the difference and relationship between these two i'll give you another example to understand this will make this very clear and this time we'll take an example of the bureaucratic life uh, administrative life fine suppose there is a meeting or a conference in delhi fine and for this meeting in delhi many bureaucrats many civil servants from different states have been invited and meeting is taking place let us suppose at place a let us believe this is uh, any any building of the national capital you can say like uh, parliament of india so meeting is take, taking place in in the parliament or the parliament annex c and all the civil servants which have been invited for this meeting have been given a stay at a huge guest house or a hotel which is b and all of them are residing with each other in a same building now because the number of the delegates is more than 500 and the government of india is not in a situation to give them personal vehicles to come and go so there is simple policy every officer will be coming at his own to the place of meeting and he or she will go back at his own and the government will believe that they have come through a taxi through a private taxi and seeing the difference between two places a normal air conditioned good taxi which suits the level of these civil servants rupees 2000 per person the government will reimburse to them so they are supposed to come with taxi and and in the rules in the declaration is it is very well mentioned no one will be supposed to give any proof that they have come from a taxi they can come at their own as they wish we will presume that they have come from a taxi by taxi and a good taxi of their level will need at least 2000 rupees or around 2000 rupees so an amount of 2000 rupees per day will be given to all the delegates which will participate in the meeting this is written in the statement as a statement now let us believe there are three persons or four person x y z fine they are the civil servants and they are going to the meeting x has gone all alone y is a clever man he managed to have three more friends so y plus 3 went with a single taxi and all of them took 2000 rupees each from the government because that is a part of the rules x also took 2000 rupees he went all alone now as far as z is concerned z was coming out of the hotel to take a taxi by chance he found one of his old friends a civil servant he was also going to the meeting and his friend said let's come together let's go together he said okay he went with one more friend let us assume he is 
D. He went with D. And D was already sitting in his taxi or car, personal car, and he went with him. Now, when the payment was being done, payment was done to X, there is no problem. It was done to Y plus all three. This is as per the rules. The payment was also being done to D as well as to Z. And surprisingly, Z denied to take the payment. And the cashier, the person who was responsible to reimburse the cash to all the delegates, he said, Sir, you have to take this money. This is as per the rules. And he said, I know I should take the money as per the rules, but the rule is made because everyone is supposed to spend 2000 rupees and so that the officers are not, uh, they are not compelled to pay at their own. That is why the rule has been made. I have not spent the money, so it will not be right for me to take the money or receive the money. And that clerical staff of the account department tried his best to convince him. But he said, no, I can't take this money at any cost. Now I ask you, why plus three are honest or they are dishonest people? You can say they are honest. This is a possibility that they are very much honest people in their official life. They are known for the honesty. But they are very much clear that they will never cross the line. They will never go beyond the rules. But any benefit that is admissible to them within the rules, they will take that benefit. And if they are enjoying a benefit which is admissible to them within the rules, you cannot say they are dishonest people. They are honest. Z is also honest. But the honesty of Z is definitely at a higher level than the honesty of these three people. And that is why when we have to define this higher level of honesty with a different term, we say Z is a person of integrity. 100% integration between the values and the conduct. He will not only see the rules, he will even see the spirit behind the rules. This rule was made because it is presumed that every officer will have to spend 2000 rupees. But because I have not spent 2000 rupees, I should not take the benefit of this rule. If someone reaches to that level of honesty, that level of transparency, that level of being right, we say this person has become a person of integrity. Now, if we have to understand the relationship between these two, what is the similarity between these two? What is the difference and can they coexist or not? I would say relationship between these two. I think most of the things have been made clear, but let us have some brief points about that also. If someone asks you what are the similarities between these two values, you can say they are from the same family, they are from the same group of values and the basic meaning is same. Same basic meaning and basic meaning is being right, not doing anything wrong. So in this sense, they have same basic meaning. This is a similarity. If someone asks you then what is the difference between these two and you can easily tell as far as the difference is concerned, the difference lies in the degree or degrees. Honesty is a value of lower degree in comparison to integrity. Integrity has the higher degree, higher intensity. This is the only difference between these two values we can say like this. Now, for this, I can take an example of a ladder. If you had to analyze the relationship between these two, you can say 
if this is the ladder of values if honesty stands here integrity will stand at the next level and relationship between integrity and honesty is very much visible with this very example now you tell me if a person has to reach at the level of integrity he is starting from here do you think he can reach the level of integrity without being honest he or she will have to become honest first there are some people who never reach even to the level of honesty some people finish their journey here they could never become even honest there are some people who go beyond this level and they end their journey here they become honest but after being honest it's not possible for them to become a person of integrity there are very rare people who reach to this level and in this sense if i ask you two things first is integrity without honesty and second is honesty without integrity you have to tell only one thing whether this is possible or this is impossible i would say integrity without honesty is impossible but honesty without integrity is possible just because of the reason that honesty is the lower level of integrity so one when reaches to the level of honesty it is not required for him to be at the level of integrity but when someone is at the level of integrity it is we can presume that he already has the level of honesty and that is why they are not in a relationship which is equal to each other honesty is a prerequisite of being a person of integrity but integrity is not a prerequisite of being an honest person now here comes the third value which is known as probity let us try to understand what probity is and to make the probity understandable i will take one more situation in front of you not situation i would try to make you understand how the meaning of the words are ascertained or defined see every value can have two references like if we talk about probity the meaning of probity can be in two references one is called institutional reference institutional reference or institutional sense we can say you can replace the word institutional with organizational professional so institutional or organizational or professional reference and one can be individual reference so there can be two references i give you one or two examples to make this clear if i say a person should be honest can i not say that a company should also be honest i can say if i say an officer must be a person of integrity i can also say that a company or an ngo should also be an institution of integrity i can say but you will accept that use of the words honesty and integrity is more relevant in case of individuals than it is relevant in case of companies or organizations or institutions both are meaningful but they are more meaningful in context of individuals and they are less used and less meaningful in context of institutions probity is more used probity is generally used in the context of institutions it it is also used in context of individuals but it has a basic meaning about institutions and that is why even in your syllabus the topic is probity in governance not probity in government officers 
probity in governance. So an institution or an organization or a company or an NGO, they should have the value of honesty and integrity. So when we talk of honesty or integrity in reference to a company or an organization or an institution, then we say probity. So probity generally, I'll separate this right now. So probity generally lies in the systems of an institution. So I can say this value has to do something with the system or in other words, I can say we need to have a systemic understanding about this. And when I say the system must have honesty or integrity, and when a system does have honesty and integrity, then this honesty or integrity is known as probity, I would say. This has to do with another term of your syllabus that is called work culture. There are some institutions which have a work culture in which transparency is there, in which for everything SOPs are well defined and they are defined with a with an understanding, with a precaution that no corrupt practice could take place. And if this is the situation, if that is the situation, we can say the system in itself is working with honesty. So probity in first sense is a value of the institution. It is not the value of an individual in the first sense. Almost all the values can be used in both senses. The office has to be honest and the officer has to be honest. The office has to be compassionate. The officer has to be compassionate. The individual should have tolerance and the office should also have tolerance to some extent. But we cannot give equal emphasis in both the meanings to both the meanings about each term. In probity, the institutional reference becomes the primary reference, whereas in honesty and integrity, the individual reference becomes the primary reference. But probity is not only used as an institutional value. It is also used as a value of individual, like honesty and integrity. What does it mean in that sense? So let us take next page probity in individual sense what does it mean and whenever you have to understand what is the meaning of probity in individual sense i would again say this is a value value of being what value of being honest value of being a person of integrity then how is it different I tell you. So value of having honesty and integrity, but there are two differences, at least two differences. One difference is the root from which the word probity has come is the same root from which the word prove has come. So some people say probity is always proved. It's not yet to be proved. Integrity or honesty may be yet to be proved. But when we say he is a man of probity or she is a woman of probity, it means this is already established that this person is very honest or a person with integrity. One more thing. When we talk of probity, we talk of honesty and integrity only in institutional or organizational or professional sphere. What does it mean? To make it more meaningful, I would use one more word. Okay, even in this, I would say financial sphere. Fine. And now, one last word. When we use the word probity for someone, we use this word irrespective of 
his or her personal value system irrespective of personal value system so if someone asks you or upsc asks you specifically about the differences between integrity and probity then only you are supposed to write this thing otherwise it's not required how i tell you with example this is honesty or integrity fine but the sphere is institutional organizational professional specifically financial if a person is very much honest in his institutional or organizational or professional life with special reference to the financial obligations or the financial responsibilities if a person is in a situation of earning a lot of money with some kind of dishonesty and he chooses not to do anything against ethics of the company or the office he or she is a person of probity so probity is the honesty or the integrity in institutional organizational professional and financial aspects and this is irrespective of the personal value system of the person what does this mean i give you an example there may be a person who is dishonest in the office in family with friends with everyone so i would say he has a consistent dishonesty or he is consistent in his dishonesty he is dishonest with everyone of his home family relationships friends everywhere contrary to this there can be a person who is honest in all the spheres of life in personal life family life with friends with neighbors he is a part of an ngo there also in his office as well i would say this is a person of overall integrity not only personal but also professional intellectual integrity all kinds of integrity which are generally enumerated this person does have all of them as the virtues in his or her personality but there can be some people who are very much honest in their personal lives social lives but not in the official life i have seen some people who are very good in their families who are very good in their neighborhood they contribute a lot to the neighborhood they when they take responsibility of the neighborhood their financial righteousness is quoted as example but everyone knows that he belongs to a department where there is a lot of corruption and he or she has also become affluent because of that corruption so a highly corrupt person in his official life may have a very high degree of integrity in his personal and social life on the contrary a person may have a very high degree of honesty and integrity in his official life professional life but he may not have the same value system in his personal life for example there is a person who is supposed to do something with the lands department of the of some state let us assume he is supposed to keep the government land safe and intact a lot of builders a lot of ministers a lot of other people try to influence him they give a lot of proposals to him monetary proposals and just because of his one signature he can earn crores of rupees because he has the authority and he is so upright he is so honest he is so an person of integrity that he refuses all the proposals and says till the time i am on this position not even a square centimeter land of the government can be taken by some corrupt person or someone who is not entitled for this he is so honest but 
when there is a dispute in his personal family property suppose his parents have died without writing a will and there is a dispute in the all the brothers and sisters that who will have which share and there he is fighting for the best interest of himself or herself or his family so a person who can make millions of rupees just by signing a paper and through land only he or she is not earning a single penny from there but when it comes to family property he or she is dying to get the maximum share this can be a possibility a person who is supposed to work for the ministry of social welfare ministry of social justice he or she may be making a lot of policies for the upliftment of minorities or the uh, other deprived sections he is working very hard for that but in his personal life he does not believe that philosophy to be right in his personal life he is not very good with the deprived classes but as soon as he enters the office he becomes a messiah of the deprived classes because this is the responsibility given by the state to him and he believes that i am a person of probity whatever the official responsibility has been given to me i will do my best to get it done but in my personal life i do not have the similar value system so don't expect me to be the same person at my home or at the place of my friends when such situation or when such person comes in front of you you can say this person has the probity but probably this person doesn't have overall integrity integration of value system and his conduct is not 100% because in professional life it is there in personal life it is absent or it is differently working in this sense a person of probity may or may not be a person of overall integrity some people say professional integrity and probity are equal a person having the level of honesty at the level of integrity in his profession is said to be a person of probity but a person with probity may or may not have integrity in his personal life social life but a person of integrity generally is believed to have integration in his overall personality be it professional be it personal be it intellectual and if someone is having only professional integrity we would say rather he is a person of probity and not a person of overall integrity so finally i think everything has been very clear now so the final relationship in these three terms if we have to decide i would say we can put them in a ladder or of these three and if i have to put them i will say honesty is at the lowest level honesty is a very high value and we have to respect this value but when compared with probity and integrity in that comparative chart i would say honesty will be the lowest value honesty can be in personal life honesty can be in professional life but honesty in itself means not to cross the lines not to break the rules for personal benefits but if you can take the personal benefits within the rules then it's fine that it's not against honesty in this stratification above the honesty comes the probity i already told you probity is not used in personal life probity is used in professional life only professional or organizational or institutional that is the only difference and when we have to choose the highest value then i would say this value is integrity and integrity has various aspects i am talking about the overall integrity so if integrity is overall i would say this is the highest value 
if integrity is only in professional life this is almost similar to or synonymous to this probity so professional integrity and probity are almost similar and i will place them below the overall integrity so this is the relationship between these three values and i believe you must be able to understand everything now so please do me a favor write some topics which you need or want me to discuss on ethics i'll try to come every week with a topic and i hope within next 8 to 10 weeks a lot of difficult topics or concepts will be discussed thanks a lot good day to you bye